name is Stefan Kreft. I'm from Germany. All my life I always liked to draw and paint and cut things up. Even when I was three years old, my mother um, told me that I um, spent five days just cutting newspaper salad. Um, and that's kind of where my creative career started. Um, in my first year in university in Germany, we um, were kind of encouraged to have a visual diary and do heaps of different things, draw, collage, find bits on the street and just put them in there. And um, I did that and really loved that. And so I just continued doing that all my studies and have got a huge pile of sketchbooks with um, lots of visual diaries and drawings and paintings and lo lovely things in it. After I finished my um, studies in graphic design in Münster, I moved to Berlin and worked for a big advertising company called Scholz and Friends for half a year. But I quickly found out that it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. I think I just wanted to be a, an artist. I just, rather than just doing what people tell me, I just wanted to explore things that I like visually or conceptually. So I thought, how can I work on a big project that's really conceptually and personal? Um, so I thought I could just do my masters and have another, another two years to spend on a great project. So I thought, where would I like to go? New Zealand, because I just like the country so much. When I first came and hitchhiked, um, and just really wanted to go back and thought I can combine those two things and do my masters in New Zealand. And that's what I did. My original proposal for my masters was um, to do a documentary about international students studying in New Zealand, but that moved away from there quite quickly and became way more personal and based on my experience in life. I combined all these different things, stop motion animation, puppetry, shadow puppetry, marionettes. The film Lepidoptera, it's really just visually explaining my personal experience in my life and also um, um, the coming out experience of realizing that you are gay and um, so it became a really personal um, journey. It starts off with um, a hand drawn, just an outline because it doesn't have much content yet that then gets a little bit more body to it and Eventually the character became a real person and became more of what he is now. When I first started um, working on animation, I realized that it's a huge job and that it's not really possible to do it all by yourself because you only have specific skills. Um, my partner William who became the actor and the animator and the writer and all of that, yeah. If you work with someone in your relationship together on a creative project and you, you can't avoid clashes and we had heaps of them. I remember one when he had to jump on a high hill um, for hours so I could stop motion animate him jumping. Okay, just go on. Jump, 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 jump. And try to jump higher. At the end I realized that um, I had done something wrong with the camera and so we had to do all of that again and he just pushed me into, the go into a gorse bush and um, screamed at me. <laughs> what I love about animation is that I just really can bring something to life rather than having something that's only still. It really becomes alive and you only see it as at the end of the process, like you start animating something and you have to focus on all the different pictures, but at the end you see it all come together and it actually looks like it's alive. 
when I was working on my master's thesis, I was experimenting with mold and mold animation, time-lapse animation of mold growing. And a friend of mine said, hey, that's exactly what another friend of mine is doing at the moment, so you should meet that guy. And um, that's how I met Paul. We um, started a little business called National Park and did stop-motion animations. And um, the beginning was quite difficult because no one knew about us, so we had to just put, an, put our name out there and cold call people, which was just so, so scary. Um, but um, after we did our first job for the um, New Zealand Transport Agency, people just knew about us and since then um, we've got a little bit of a name and can just work on lots of beautiful animations commercially. All our puppets are cut out of paper and just collage together in the real world rather than on the computer, which is, you know, the whole idea of um, National Park that, that is handmade and kind of a bit more real, I guess. Working with clients definitely takes a little bit of energy away from only the focus on the creative making. At the moment, National Park is more of a collaboration basis where Paul and I can come together if an animation job comes up. But then I can also I also have the freedom to do other things like working on the puppet show that I'm working on at the moment as well. Pretty soon after we set up um, National Park in Wellington, um, me and my partner Will decided to move out into the country. Here in Greytown we obviously have a little bit of land and we can have chickens and cats and spend lots of time outside in the garden and it's really great. Greytown is a little village with just over 2,000 inhabitants and um, it's got a beautiful artist community, so heaps of creative people which I really loved just after we've moved here. I was part of the Greytown Arts Festival exhibition and uh, met beautiful um, artists and it was really great to be part of the community here. The Kitchen at the End of the World is a marionette play that um, actually Will, my partner, um, started thinking about probably seven years ago, I think. And the main theme of the play is um, the end of creativity. Um, a poet and a musician and a mathematician meet up for a drink. The poet says that whatever he's been writing recently he's discovered that someone else has already written exactly the same thing before. And the, his friend, the musician, says, yeah, the same, same that happened to me with the music. And the mathematician says, I've just calculated there's only one last combination of musical notes and words left. So they're looking for the last song. And that's the, during the course of the play, they're going to find it at the end. So we pitched the concept for the show to the festival committee, who then said, yeah, that sounds great, but we don't have anyone who's coordinating the festival at the moment, so we can't actually take you on. And I just had to think about it for two days and discussion with Will and thought, actually, I want to do it. Since then, I've been working on the festival and the play, director for both, and I've been making the nine puppets. Um, one puppet, if you work on it full time, takes um, more than a week to make um, and then after that it's costume and painting and all of that as well. Both the um, Great and Arts Festival as well as the Kitchen at the End of the World are just projects that I just work on without being paid for it so I've been doing it since February and it's now um, September. And my lovely partner has been supporting me, so we've been living on one income um, for quite a while now. It's been a little bit challenging, but it's also been amazing to work on creative projects where I can really just be part of the community um, and also connect with so many really creative people in the wire upper and um, being able to put something together that connects them all. It's just been really great.
weeks now I've had writer's block, but this isn't the usual kind. It feels permanent. That was pretty. Oh, pen, there you are. So we, we spent um, three quarters of a year preparing the play and making the puppets and rehearsing with the big team and having it on one weekend, just a short season, um, felt actually quite good to just wrap it up and um, have it actually come to life. Our play um, was sold out in every single um, performance, which was amazing and we didn't expect anything like that. There were so many people who came to the different shows that we actually got a little bit of money and um, which meant that I could be paid and that was a really beautiful reward next to the happy faces and to everyone being stoked with the outcome of the festival. It was a lump sum after three quarters of a year not being able to buy a coffee. <laughs> um, so it was really great. Kitchen at the End of the World was such an important thing for us. We just knew that if we wanted to do it, then we have to sacrifice a lot of things, which is mainly free time, money. But I think because we knew that it was going to be an amazing thing, we all really wanted to do it. So we were happy to just give up some of the things and had a, had a really not so money spending year. But I think it was definitely worth it. I think, I think you just have to work on the ideas that you're really passionate about and if you are really passionate about then it'll be something really amazing as well.